Good morning, Mr. Hatteridge. Hello, Miss. Hey, I didn't expect to run into you boys out here. What a pleasant surprise. Get down. I hand it over. I haven't got it. Is that why you're running? Well, I didn't know who was chasing me. I thought perhaps it was a holdup. What do you got to steal? You've got the map. Well, it's good to see old friends. Old friends are the best, I always say. Well, Charlie, this old friend is going to kill you. I was coming to meet you. Well, you don't think... But you fellas, you staked me. Without you, I never could have set up that widow woman. You don't think that I would cheat you. And where's our share of the money? I got into a faro game. And lost it. I thought I could double your money for you. I wanted to surprise you. <laughs> Poor flusher. Drop him. No, take it easy. No, he who travels the wrong road makes the trip twice. No, look at here. Well, you look at it. You know what? That's a map of the lost beta load. No, think of it. The lost beta claim. It's, that's over $50 million minimum. Charlie, if it's lost, it's no good to us. Well, it's not completely lost. I've got it almost pinned down. You fellas, with your youth and intelligence and your energy, you can find it in less than a week. I tell you what, I'll swap it to you for what I owe you and fifty dollars to boot. Goodbye, slicker. No, no, take it easy. I'll give you your money, but you just got to wait a couple of days. Where are you going to get that kind of money in a couple of days? Well, I've got an ace in the hole. I didn't think I'd have to use it, but... Well, he'll understand. That's enough talk, fat man. Drop him. What's the whole card, Charlie? Barkley. Heath Barkley. He'll give me the money. Why would he give it to you? He's my son. Dig some new wells. Oh. Boy, howdy, I'll tell you, it hadn't even begun to get dry yet. And I tell you, this is the driest season we've had in years. Now, where I've been, they figure this would be the rainy season. Oh? Yeah, I remember one time over near Yuma when I was riding with this fellow chasing cows. Uh-huh. It clouded up a bit and a drop of rain hit him. Uh, and then what? Well, the shock knocked him clean out of the saddle. Did he live? Well, it was right close, but I, uh, I threw a bucket of sand in his face and he came right out of it. Uh-huh. I'll see you at lunch. Keep barking. Inside. Charles Sawyer, geologist and mining engineer specializing in gold mines at your service. Keith Barkley, what can I do for you? Well, now, it happens I've run into some likely prospects on land I understand belongs to the Barclay family in the central foothills. Now, in order for Mr. me to... Mr. Sawyer, develop... we've had those hills completely surveyed, and we pretty well know what's in there and what isn't in there. Well, excellent. Would you be thinking about leasing some of it out for further development? Well, that's my brother Jared's department. He's in the house. I see. Thank you. He's... I want to level with you straight as a gun barrel. 
I didn't come here about mining. Pardon me? I come to talk about you. All right, what are you selling? Family. No, I don't want to shock you. And I don't want to surprise you. Let me start by saying, they've led a hard life. They've knocked around as long as they can remember. Always looking for the big chance. But now, time is running out on me. Mr. Sawyer, I got a lot of work to do. And just what are you getting at? Well, about 27 years ago, your mother married a young footloose prospector by the name of Charlie Sawyer. Now, hold on, lad. A few months after that, she heard that Charlie Sawyer had drowned in a creek up above Strawberry. And she changed her name back to her maiden name. Now, just what are you saying? I'm trying to tell you that I'm your father. My father was Tom Barkley. Hold on now. This is a marriage certificate between Charles Sawyer and Leah Thompson. Now, we've got something else here. There. That's your dear sweet mother right there, and that's me. And I can describe the house you were born in. It was a white house with a bay window on the left. And in the living room was a motto embroidered, God bless our home. Anybody could have been in that house. Her favorite hymn was Old Hundred. Remember? And you've made this whole thing up. Peace. I've salted a lot of minds in my life, lad. But this is the truth. I don't want anything. I only wanted to see you. But why now? Oh, I wanted to see you for a long time, lad. Man has a son. Doesn't want to go to his grave never having laid eyes on him. It turned out to be a lot more than I ever dared hope for. Oh, no. You don't give me that. I know how this must fall upon you. And I'm not proud for having let you live a lie all these years. But there was a reason. I couldn't scratch out enough dust to buy beans. And there was a baby coming. Something had to be done in a hurry. And there was Tom Barkley. I cooked up that story about drowning. Nobody was ever found. That left the way open for Tom Barkley and your ma. All right, Sawyer. There's still people in Strawberry that can identify you. Now, let's see if anybody remembers. You're going to Strawberry with me. Well, that's perfectly agreeable with me. And I think you're bluffing. Son, I haven't got time to bluff. I know the truth of me and the truth of you. I'll go tomorrow if you like. I'll be here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock on the dot. Son. Settle your breakfast. Morning. Morning. Might as well tell you I have to take a ride over towards Strawberry tomorrow. Strawberry? It's uh, old business. Personal? Yeah, personal. Is there anything I can do? No, this, uh, this fellow Sawyer has a line on some old property that uh, was put in my name a long time ago and forgotten about. And you want to see to it personally? Yeah, I may as well get it straightened out as to whose it really is. Oh, good. You had me thinking it might be something important. The only thing that's important is getting water to the stock. Oh, Nick, Heath is going to Strawberry for a couple of days. Strawberry? Mm-hmm. Well, there's no water in Strawberry. No, there's nothing in Strawberry except my mother's grave.
Well, I guess I'm ready. Without breakfast? Well, I want to get going. Oh. Well, Heath, I hope the property is really yours and it's full of gold. I hope so, too, Heath. I hope you make a million. Well, if I did, I guess I'd have to share it with all of you since uh, you shared with me. No, no, I think it belongs to you. It hasn't anything to do with the Barclays. Well, as long as I'm a Barclay, I say it does. That sounds like you were smacked in the head by a raindrop, no sand to bring you to. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta go. Wonder if maybe I should go with him. No, no. Whatever it is, it's, uh, it's something he has to do by himself. Well, this nugget, this nugget came from one of the richest lords there ever was. Of course, I'm getting kind of old and feeble now. And I'd be willing to let it go, Mr. Barkley, for 5% of the mine over the next five years and $5,000 now. Sorry, Mr. Sawyer. Well, now, maybe... Mr. Sawyer. Well, it's been awful nice talking to you. Very nice indeed. You've got a wonderful family here. Let's go. Eve. I know what you're thinking. From the sounds of that old duck, I'd say your trip is going to be wasted. I hope it is. going the same way we are. Well, you know them? No, can't say I do. Maybe they're just partners like we are. Maybe. Time, I hope. This will do. Oh! Used to be I could stay in the saddle all day long, but no more. Too many fancy parlor cars and hotel rocking chairs. Would you like a little nip? I'll wait for the coffee. Well, here's to us. You and me against the world. You know, we could use some fresh water. Oh, I'll get it. See that red flag? He did. Well, then you should have known this was a varmint trap. That water's poisoned. He didn't know. Poisoned? Well, forget this stuff. We'll use what I got left in my canteen. I, I can't believe it. I could have been killed. Me. Poisoned. I could have died in agony, except for you. You saved my life. I don't know how to thank you, but you have me eternal gratitude. But don't thank me. I did it strictly for myself. I really mean it. And it's a pleasure to meet an honest man. You know, I never trusted anyone. But I trust you. Because you're my own flesh and blood. Son. And don't call me son. All right, you just wait till we get up to Strawberry. Suppose there's nobody left in Strawberry that remembers you. There will be. You'll see. Everybody knew Charlie Sawyer. Hometown. I'm 
I'm glad he never came back. You know, if your story's straight, you left my mother to make her way in this. Well, it wasn't like this then. I'd right, have bust you right now. Now, take it easy. You can see for yourself there wasn't enough gold around to keep this town alive, or me either. Well, let's see if my aunt and uncle know you. Well, they should. I helped them celebrate the day they bought the hotel. Well, they're probably long gone. Why don't you try this alone? Well, I'm willing to try anything. It's been an awful long time. I'm going to get a straight answer from somebody, Charlie. Oh, hello, Gitz. You all step right up here. Just make yourself right at home. Now, what can I do for you? A little information first. Do you know him? Oh, maybe. After 30 years, all my customers look like a bunch of jugs. All the same. <laughs> well, now, I know it's been more than 25 years, but I haven't changed that much. I know this place. Used to have a great big picture of Cleopatra right there over the bar. And the spittoons were big, gallon size, all shined up. You had a free lunch down at the end of the counter. Yes, sir. Them was the days. And, mister, if you say I know you, I do. That's for sure. Well, it's not sure enough for me. Is there any other old-timers left in town? Nope. They're all dead and moved out. I'm going to tell you, mister, this is one lonesome town. Hannah. Is Hannah dead? Hannah James? <laughs> no, she's still on the outskirts of town, singing songs to herself. Hannah, she used to take care of your mother. And me. Son, that Hannah, she'll know old Charlie Sawyer unless her eyes are gone blind. Well, son, I believe we've come to the end of our quest. Boy, Heath, you didn't forget. Heath, I'm pleased. You look better than ever. Better or worse. I'm ready to meet my maker whenever he calls me. Who's that with you, Heath? Do you know him? From a long time ago? I got a short time memory for faces nowadays. <sighs> You're supposed to be drowning. Then you do know him. I sure do. Oh, yes. What happened to you, Mr. Sawyer? We all thought you was dead. It's a long story, Hannah. There are some things a man doesn't like to talk about. You come back here to live again? No, but nothing here calling me. Just wanted someone to tell Heath here who I was. He ain't never seen me till a couple of days ago. Heath, honey, I made the wedding dinner the day your ma and Mr. Sawyer got married. Alive or dead, good or evil, he's the same Mr. Sawyer who swore to take care of your ma. And then one day was gone. Drowned, we thought. You didn't write her or nothing. That wasn't decent, Mr. Sawyer. She was a good woman, a real lady. And she grieved for you. Your ma had many a trial in her short life, but you were her joy. Thank you, Hannah. It's been good to see you. I don't think I said the right thing, but you asked me about Mr. Sawyer. Just don't you worry, Hannah. And if ever you want to move into the valley, just let me know, and I'll see that it's taken care of. Hush, boy. I'm all right here. But you do the right thing. Be merciful. Walk humbly by the side of your Lord. And bless you, Heath. Heath, you been to see your ma's grave? I've been keeping it off. But if it don't look right to you, let me know. I'm sure it's just fine, Anna. Thank you.
satisfied? I believe Hannah. Want to visit your mother's grave, son? Not a chance. Don't take it out on your mother. It was all my doing. I made her go along with me. Where are you going? To get a drink. around here when there's a lot of people. <laughs> well, lad, here's to us, son. It's no go, Charlie. You get the same from me as you gave her. Now, look, he's Two wrongs don't make a right. I'm going back to the ranch and I'm going to pack up my things and then to Mexico. There's no sense talking wild just because it's all new to you. There's no sense giving up everything. A Barkley is a Barkley and a Sawyer is a Sawyer. Now look, son, I've traveled the whole world over. One thing I learned, you never kill the goose that lays the golden egg. You get one chance out of life and that's it. And you don't burn your bridges behind you. No, Mrs. Barkley, huh? She might take a liking to me. Think about that. I bet you lived half your life off women. That may be so. But nobody ever handed me anything like they did you. Nobody ever handed me 10,000 acres of gold mines and orange groves. All I've ever had is a pair of shiny boots and a self-made smile. You can't make a cowbird look like a robin. Now, starting today, I'm nothing but me. There you go, boys. You're gonna like it. There's a little matter of cash money. I'll have to make a small loan from you. I'm in a bit of a squeeze. No, you see those two? They want money. So that's what it's all about. Believe me, Heath, if you don't help me, I'm finished. I don't have any money. Nothing at all. Well, you listen to sense now, man. I know I've done a lot of things in my life I shouldn't be proud of. But I'm boxed in. It's a matter of pay up or lay down. No, you can get the money from the bank and I'll pay you back. It's up to you. It's not up to me. I won't trade on a name that isn't mine. So long, Charlie. Keith, wait. Call it, Charlie. It ain't gonna work. It, it will work. He's coming around. About what we heard. Well, all I need is a little more time. Well, you done had all the time that you're gonna get. Give some more whiskey here. A badge, you mean anything? <laughs> you know, the sheriff, the mayor, the dog catcher. <laughs> Supposing I want to have somebody arrested. <laughs> there ain't been anybody around here to arrest for years. Well, then I'd say it. You need a deputy, wouldn't you? What for? Because I said so. That's what for. Now, looky here, Charlie Sawyer. See what I got? <laughs> I got me a badge. That makes me the sheriff. You know what the first thing I'm going to do is? I'm going to put you under arrest. I accuse you of embezzlement, misappropriation of funds, and running out on your sentence. Now, how do you plead? Well, I... Lock him up. Now, you've been accused of all them things, Charles. Give me the keys to jail. They've been lost a long time ago. And what about the town hall? Burned down four years ago. 
All right, then we're going to hold court right here. Right here is right. Now, everybody be quiet. Now, Mr. Charles Sawyer, you've been accused of all these things. Now, how do you plead? Well, I, I plead guilty to taking your money, but I'm going to give it back to you, and with interest, too, and that's a fact. Like the bankers say, Tally, that loan's to be paid back on demand. And we're demanding now. And what prospects do you got of raising $3,000 now? Oh, excellent, excellent. Heath Barkley and I were just talking about a new financial agreement. As a matter of fact, Jared Barkley, Heath's brother, is very much interested in my map of the lost data mine claim. Verdict is guilty. Sentence is neck hanging to his death. Now, wait a minute, boys. Don't you think y'all have too much of this stuff now? Why don't you just call it quits? Necktie hanging is a pretty serious thing. Stealing money is serious, too. After you, Charles. That rope. Now, look, I don't want no part of this hell. I get the rope! I get your head split. You, you, you're going to regret this tomorrow. No, you wouldn't want to be doing it. You just think that. You don't want to. Charlie, I don't want any more trouble. Now you, down. Charlie. You're going to let me come with you? Just till you're safe out of town. I've never 
never met anyone quite like you. Oh, if I'd only known it could have been this way. The two of us, side by side. Lad, I want to talk to you straight. Father to a son. I want you to help me find my lost mind. Charlie, how many times have you sold your map? A lot. But I never put in the one mark that made the directions right. No, you never put it in because you didn't know it. Oh, it was there all right. A mountain, like a big mound of butter. Charlie, how many times have you told some widow that you lost your family in an epidemic? And how many times have you told some some crippled old lady or some sympathetic old preacher that you lost your family to the Indians crossing the plains? And how many times have you sold your mind? And Charlie, how many times have you sold your family with it? It was never quite like that. Charlie, you sold every little piece of yourself and every little dream that could have been. Oh, just to live easy and be the big spender. Well, now you've lived it and you've spent it. Now be man enough to admit it. All right. All right, I did it. But here you are, and that's a fact. And here I am, and that's a fact. Charlie, I rode into that Barclay Ranch to claim my heritage because I believed it was a fact. And now I have to ride in there and say that it was a lie. I did it for you. I sacrificed my home life so you could get ahead. Well, this is where we say goodbye. Now, you just keep going and hope that we never meet again. Tracks aren't it? Partner with him? No, I don't think so. I don't see any other signs around. I think him and the boy must have split up. All right, let's go. Next time we catch up with Charlie Sawyer, we don't waste any words. We don't listen to any. We can kill him on sight. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd be home today. As a matter of fact, she was up half the night preparing your favorite dinner. Now, I trust you haven't lost your taste for wild duck. How did it go in strawberry? Is the property yours? There is no property. There never was. Well, uh, why don't we discuss this after dinner? This is something that has to be said now. When I first came here, I... I was no better than a tumbleweed blowing in the wind. I had no roots and no, no place anywhere. And I went from odd job to odd job. And a cheap hotel room was about the best I could afford. But I, I wanted a home. And a name that, a name that could be respected. And then I found out about my mother and Tom Barkley. I didn't lie to you that day that I came here. I believed that 
Tom Barkley was my father. And that I wasn't entitled to my share of everything that the Barclays owned. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm not... I'm not a Barclay. I'm a Sawyer. Charlie Sawyer is my father. Nick. nothing more to talk about. There's a great deal to talk about. Please go away. All right. All right, Heath. But we've listened to you. Now you're going to have to listen to us before you leave. You should have busted right in. No, no. Give him a little time to think about what he's been doing. Time isn't going to help anything. I think we'd better bring this out in the open Jared. right now. Maybe it'll be a little easier for him to talk to Nick and me. scared half to death. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a worry. You know, I don't know where you got your information, but there's some very interesting facts about Charlie Sawyer. Look, I know all about Charlie Sawyer, but it wasn't his word alone. There was Hannah up in Strawberry. She knew him right away. And how old is Hannah? How good is her memory? Isn't it possible she could be wrong? <laughs> Jared, it's no use. Did you check the county records? It wasn't necessary. Well, I think it was. Unless, of course, there's some reason why you don't want to be a Barclay. Jared, it's not what I want. It's what I am. And us? What are we supposed to do? Start acting like you're a perfect stranger? Look, I have been here under false pretenses, and now I'm leaving. That's that. You're leaving when we're about to face the worst drought we've had in 30 years. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Heath. Your decision now is affecting all of us. And you're not giving us a chance to say yes or no. If it's a name you're worried about, I can make that as legal as any birth certificate. Thanks, Jerry. But I'm not a Barclay. Oh, I ought to belt you one standing there trying to make us beg you. All right. Let's go downstairs. Maybe Mother and Audra can talk some sense to you. You know something, Heath? Come to think of it, maybe you're not a Barkley after all. There's no maybe to it. Now let's go. Just, just let me say this. More than anybody knows, I, I appreciate what you all have done for me and for making me a part of this family. You gave me a lot more than I deserved. But I'm sorry. Anything I took now would be 
would be charity. Charity? Heath Barkley, I never heard of anything so ridiculous in my... Charity? Why, you're as much a Barkley as I am. Now, you listen to me. This family, and that includes you, this family stands together. If we're not tied by blood, then we are tied by sacrifice, work, and love. Now, you fought your way in here, and by heaven, you're going to have to fight your way out. I will not have that old history raked up again. It's done, over with, finished. And you can leave, Heath, or you can leave. But it won't change a thing. Because no matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter what you call yourself, you'll still be a Barkley. I'll always want to be a Barkley. Thanks for everything. Now you just hang on, I'm gonna get my horse. turned up again. I had to come back. I had a lot of my conscience. I had to straighten out. It's all straight, Charlie. No, no. I've got to have a clean slate. Heath, I've got to tell you. I've got to. All that stuff I told you about being your daddy. That was all a lie. But, but you married my mother. Aye. That was true. Oh, she was so young. She listened to my lies. And to me. And I took what little money she had and ran off. No, boy, I'm not your father. But I don't understand. You weren't born for maybe two years after I left. Oh, I can't tell you about the wickedness that was inside of me. I just took and took and took. 
Never gave a nickel back. Oh, I knew how to take their money, all right. But I didn't know what was going on inside of them. And nobody knew what was going on inside of me. Don't try to talk, Charlie. His son. I want you to have my gold mine. Something I've got to tell you, something I've got to say. Oh, God. How I wish you had been my son. Dowson for water? Uh-huh. About Charlie's mine. I don't want it. Well, that's what I figured, but I had it checked by an expert anyway. So what'd you find? Nothing. Fool's gold, Heath. A mountain of iron pyrites. All glitter, no gold. Well, he had the dream anyway. I'm kind of glad that wasn't spoiled for him. Oh, come on, brother. Let's go back. Well, there's still some light left, Nick. I'm going to I'm gonna keep going here. Well, now, you can't find water with a peach tree twig. Well, I might surprise you. A peach tree twig belongs in a peach tree. Mm, usually. Um, you're, you're in the way. He's got a stubborn streak a mile wide. Just like all the other Barclays. Right, brother? You faked it. Get the pick. Get the pick! I found the water, you can at least dig. There ain't no water down there. Now, Nick, I've seen this thing work plenty of times before. But if you ain't got no faith in it, you don't think we need another well around right, here right, and the drought's coming. Will you, will you hold it a minute? All right, I'll get the pick. But if there ain't no water down there, you're going to be sorry you started this whole thing.
Bienvenida, senor. Thank you, Pepe. It was nice of you to come, senor. Well, it's nice of you and your father to ask me. Amigo! <laughs> Excellent, excellent. It looks like I'm early. Don't worry, my friend. Teresa and her father will be here. <laughs> Would you like a drink, senor? By all means. I hear that you have been seeing a great deal of Teresa Comargo. Well, yes, I guess I have. Oh, she's a lovely girl, to your good taste. Thank you. Mm. Mm. And to you, to the Barclays, and most important, to my dear friend, your mother. Thank you, General. So, how is the work coming along with your mind? Well, installing pumps is a little slow process. Good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. If it means that we will have you with us a longer time. But won't you be going back to Mexico City soon? No. I will be staying here in Rio Blanco. I have uh, resigned from the government. I have broken with Diaz. This does not seem to surprise you. No. No, I've seen what's been happening. Our people have lost everything they gained under President Juarez. Pepe. But he's right. Diaz has nothing to offer the people except the firing squad to those who complain too loudly. But what are you going to do, General? Once, I would have fought against him as I did against Santana, Guerrero, Bustamante, as I fought with Juarez against Maximilian and the French. But uh, I'm not so young anymore, and that must be Teresa and her father. Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> General! Amigo. General! General, you must get away from here. Get away? Diaz has ordered your arrest. The Ruales are coming for you. They will be here any minute now. You must take Pepe and go. Use our horses. Wait. There is no time to argue, General. You must leave Rio Blanco now. You must get out of Mexico. Leave Mexico? <sighs> it is not safe here anymore. Diaz's rurales are everywhere. But to run away? General, you must go now. But where? I have no place. Across the border to California. To the ranch, you'll be safe there. Come on. Pepe. Vamos. <laughs> Adios, amigo, and gracias. Senor Barclay. Buenas noches, Captain. What's going on? I have orders to arrest Vicente Ruiz. The general? El bandito, senor. Bandit? Si. You've seen him? No, I haven't seen the uh, bandit. Buenas noches, Captain. General. Oh, please. Sorry. Vicente. 
But I just can't think if he's anything but general. All right, baby. Sí, papá. Buenos días, señora. Good morning, Pepe. Vicente. Good morning. Where are you going? Into Pepe? town. Is there anything I can get for you? Oh, for me, no. Uh, nothing, thank you. Oh, here comes Jared. Thank you. What are you doing home this time of day? Playing postman for my lady. From he? Oh, does it say when he'll be home? Dear family, if the installation of the pumps goes as expected, I'll be leaving here on the 21st. That's a week from today. Tell Nick I'm stalling until he gets through riding fence up at Sky Meadows. Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you what's keeping him down there. It's that pretty senorita he's been riding about. Oh? And wait till Brother Nick hears about the lovely Teresa Dolores Francesca Camargo. He'll get mad, drop everything he's doing, and go fishing until Heath gets back. Hey, where are you going, to town? Mm-hmm. Well, then you, my dear, are unanimously elected to prepare my lunch. Oh, lucky me. I can tell by your attitude that you are absolutely overwhelmed. He sends you his regards. Oh, thank you. I can see that uh, you still don't like for me to work as a Herrero. But we want you here as a guest, not a blacksmith. Now, I'm about ready to put my foot down. Then I will have to leave. Do you see, I like the work of a Herrero. It was the work of my father and of his father. It is good work. Work that is something I have almost forgotten how to do. I have almost forgotten everything but to hate and kill. Now, for the first time since I was no bigger than Pepe, I have peace. I have my work. I have my son with me. I have you and your family as my friends. There is nothing more that I want. I'm happy. All right, Vicente. I'll try and remember that. Thank you. Campamento. Oh, now, what can we do, boy? I'm looking for an hacienda of a family named Barkley. What do you want there? I'm looking for a friend. What's his name? I'm Nick Barkley. Que buena suerte. I'm looking for Vicente Reese, who's staying at your ranch. Perhaps he has mentioned my name to you. I'm Jacobo Lopez. As a matter of fact, he has, yes. I must see Vicente, senor. Well, the road to the ranch is right down there. Pretty long trip, though. You're welcome to stay here for some grub, if you like. No, senor, gracias. But I must see Vicente. Adios. Adios. <laughs> You made a mistake. A big mistake.
Lovely, my dear, lovely. That was beautiful, Teresa. Come in, Captain, come in. Buenas tardes, Don Alfredo. Forgive me, but I was riding by and I heard the senorita singing. I was enchanted. I could not resist the temptation to stop and pay my respects. Gracias. Ah, Senor Barclay. It's good to see you. It's been a long time. Weeks. Been busy out at the mine, Captain. Ah, see, si, see. Si. And I have been busy searching the hills for Ruiz. <laughs> but with no luck, of course. And I will tell you why. He's in California. Are you sure? Ah, positive. California. <laughs> That's your home, Senor. California's a big state, Captain. True, true. But still, it is somewhat of a coincidence, is it not? Since I have been informed that your family has known Ruiz for many, many years. My mother has. I see. She must have been shocked to learn that he had embezzled a million pesos from the government of Mexico. Well, I must tell you something about my mother, Captain. She's one of those people who believes a man isn't guilty until he's proved guilty. Of course. But if Ruiz is innocent, why did he run away? Do you really want me to answer that? See, si. uh, Let's not spoil an afternoon with such talk. May I offer you a brandy? Gracias, senor. Senor Barclay, have you heard from your family? The garden is lovely this time of day. Senorita? <laughs> Ah, muchas gracias, Don Alfredo. Thanks for rescuing me. I didn't want you to waste any time on Capitan Chavez. When soon you will be gone? Well, unless one of those new pumps at the mines break down. Is it possible? Well, I'll see what I can do. Bandito should try an honest day's work. It's not as bad as you think. Uh, Wait, uh, I have something for you, General. No, no, no more, General. No more, no more. Uh, we will talk about that. But first, look. Ah, uh, Amontillado. <laughs> From your own wine cellar in Rio Blanco. No. <laughs> See, Captain Chavez lives there now, but we still visit the wine cellar now and then. <laughs> Hey, you bandidos! <laughs> you ride a long way. Let's wash down the dust with some of this wine, huh? Oh, 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 oh. Everybody's asleep, so we sit down here. Make yourself comfortable, my friends. What a surprise! What a surprise! <laughs> I was on my way to sleep. All of a sudden, I look up and I see. <laughs> Never in a hundred years will I think such a surprise. <laughs> Salud. Suerte, suerte. <laughs> Mm, it's good, eh? <laughs> 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 this is like old times, eh? Yeah, it's just like old times. <laughs> but tell me, you... You did not come all the way from Rio Blanco just to have a drink with me, did you? Huh? No. No, we did not come just to drink wine. Then why did you come? General, Diaz knows where you are. Well, so? He's not president here. What can he do? 
Just what he has done, Vicente. Sent an assassino to kill you. We found out and we came after him. We caught up with him this afternoon. And? He got away from us. But he is wounded. We will catch up with him. Huh. You know, only today I told the Senora, I have finally found peace. That is not all, General. It will be hard for you to believe this. But that assassino, that was Hakabo. Hakabo? Hakabo? No, 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 no. It is true. But, 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 but Hakabo, he's my friend. He belongs to Diaz now. No, no. For 25 years, I ride together with him. I fight together with him. He's more than a compadre to me. He is a brother. That is what Diaz is doing to Mexico. He is turning our brothers into spies, traitors, asesinos. No, 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 not Hakabo. See, si, Hakabo. Well, then there is no hope. You are wrong, Vicente. There is still much hope. You do not know. You have been away. The people, they are angry, restless. They are like the brush grown dry in the sun. One spark and all of Mexico will go up in flames. And you, you could strike that spark. Ay, Vicente, the people all over Mexico are scrawling your name. Viva Vicente. Viva Ruiz. Death to Diaz. And Diaz is not blind. He sees, he knows, and he is afraid. That is why he sent Hakabo to kill you. Come back, General. Your old compañeros are waiting. They rode with you once, they will ride again. No, no, you do not need me. We do. There must be others. If there were, we would not be here. Only you can overthrow Diaz. Come back, Vicente. I, ha I have to think about it. General. You do not belong here. You belong with your compañeros, where you are able to help them fight. I have friends here, too. And my, my son is here, also. See, see, but your amigos, they are waiting. I cannot you. decide now. Bueno. We understand, General. But when? When can you give us an answer? Tomorrow, eh? Si, si, tomorrow. Bueno. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Hasta mañana. Nos veremos, ¿eh? Nos Good morning, senora. Vicente, I thought you might like a cool drink. Oh, gracias, gracias. There. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I suppose your friends will be here soon. Uh, si, si. Have you made up your mind what you're going to do? No, not yet. Oh, I've been very happy these last three months, senora. Well, I'm glad, Vicente, but... But what? Well, I... I wonder how long you could go on being happy, knowing your people wanted you and need you. Well, uh, I have to think of Pepe. Oh, he could stay here. No. Pepe? I won't stay here. If you go back to Mexico, I go with you. You can always come back later on. No. Pepe, you will do as I say. I won't stay here without you. If you leave me, I'll go back on my own. I swear it. Oh, he's your son, Vicente. No question about that. Si, sí, si. Sí. All right. All right, you will come with me, if I decide to go back. If you go back? 
Haven't you already made up your mind? See, si, see. Si. You're right, senor. <laughs> I have decided. I am going back. We are going back. Padre, we ride again. <laughs> but not for someone else this time, General. For you. This time it is you they want. It is you they wait for. By the thousands, General. By the tens of thousands. Nick and Jared will be disappointed they weren't here to say goodbye to you. So I'll say it for them. Goodbye, Vicente. And good luck. How can I thank you, Senora? You can't, because there's nothing to thank me for. Yeah. I mean it. I'm still in your debt. I always will be. Pepe. Adios, senora. Adios, senorita. Adios, general. Mother. Hmm? Nick. Friend of the Sundays. Hank. Take him on inside. I'll be in the minute. You're wrong, senor. He was my friend, but he died my enemy. His name was Jacobo Lopez. We rode together, and he became an assassino for Diaz. He was sent here to kill me. If it were not for my friends, he would. Well, now, that's not the story that Jacobo told me before he died. No? He said that these men were working for Diaz, not him. He said that about us, senor? He said that these men were sent down here to get you back to Mexico. He lied. Let him finish. But it was Jacobo that... Let him finish. Vicente. If we had come down here to kill you, would we be standing here? You didn't come here to kill him. Diaz doesn't want him dead, not right now, anyway. He's afraid it'd make a martyr out of him. But he does want you back in Mexico so he can put you on trial for embezzlement. Vicente, the people want you, not Diaz, and Diaz knows this. He also knows the only way to stop these people from following you is to get you to Mexico, put you on trial, brand you a thief, and disgrace you. Well, anyway, that, that's Hakabo's story. Do you think that he was telling the truth? Well, now, Vicente, you knew him better than I did. What do you think? Vicente! Look, Vicente. The man was dying. He knew he was dying. Now, why would he lie? What would he have to gain? What would he have to gain, Miguel? Vicente, we... We have been friends for a long time. Answer the question, what did he have to gain? You, you can't believe that, that, that I would... Why? Why should I believe what you say about Jacobo and not believe what Jacobo says about you? You say we have been friends for a long time, that is true. But so have I been friends with Jacobo. You say that Diaz turns our compadres into traitors. If it is true, if it has happened to Jacobo, then why can't it happen to anybody? To me? To you? To anyone else? Huh? Why? Vicente, I, I... I swear that... You lie! Oh, sir! Oh. For 30 years I have known you, Miguel. 
I know those eyes. I know that face, and I know when there's a lie behind them. Oh, get out of my sight, all of you. You heard him. Now move out. Move! Hey, what evening, sir? Hasta la vista, General. Si, si, we will meet again. And perhaps we too, Senor. It was a lovely day. My pleasure. I wish to speak to you. Yes, Father? It's about Senor Bartley. What about him? I must ask you not to see him again. Why can't I... That should not be too much to ask. He will be leaving Rio Blanco in a few days. But why can't I see him? Teresa, while you were out, Captain Chavez was here. He brought me disturbing news. The government has found out that Senor Bartley helped Vicente Ruiz escape to the United States. More than that, Ruiz is now living on the Barclay Rancho in California. But how does that concern us? Teresa, you are not a child. You know the atmosphere of the country as well as I do. Chavez did not come here to gossip. He came as a friend with a warning. He was advising us to have nothing more to do with this friend of Ruiz. You are afraid of Chavez? Only a fool would not be afraid. He could ruin me. I will not risk incurring the displeasure of the Diaz government over nothing. Nothing? Flirtation. It is more than that. You may call it whatever you wish, but it must stop. Teresa! You may think of me as you wish. You may call me a fool, you may patronize me as a frightened old man. But you cannot disobey me in this. Good night, Papa. going to do? I don't know. I want to go home. Home? Oh. Pepe, do you know what that really means? I know what Jacobo said to Senor Nick, that the people are waiting for you. Even so. Diaz will not run at the sound of the first shot. It will mean months, at least months of living in the mountains, hiding, fighting, being hunted. I don't care. But I care for you, Pepe. That was my life. I don't want that for you. I promised your mother. That was your promise, Papa, not mine. Good night, Pepe. We will talk in the morning, make our decisions. One thing is sure, we cannot stay here. I will not bring my troubles to the house of my friends. Good night, Pepe. Jared? Oh, Nick. 
Well, I'm sure glad to see you. Something wrong? We had just a little bit of trouble this afternoon. The trouble has returned, senor. Well, well. Do you have the feeling we should know these gentlemen, Nick? They're Diaz men after the senti. Get the others, Leon. Now then. Into the house. Move, andale. was just coming up to get you, General. Vamos, Vicente. You're coming with us. It's a long way to the border, gentlemen. I doubt that you'll ever make it. And all the way south, every lawman's gonna be on your trail. If you wish to see the General die, that is up to you. I promise you, you will never get him back alive. <laughs> She's inside, my son. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Heath. Now, look, this whole thing doesn't make sense to me. One day we're fine, and the next day I get a note telling me to saddle up and ride. Now, if I've done anything wrong... You did nothing wrong. Well, then what is it? It's... It's my father. He's afraid. Afraid of what? Of you. Of the fact that you're a friend of General Ruiz. Well, he knew that. But he didn't know you helped him to escape. That he's living on your rancho. Well, what's that got to do with He us? forbid me to see you. Oh, Heath, you don't understand because you don't live here. You come, you stay a while, you go. But we must stay. Stay with the fear that everything we have could be taken from us. Because somebody doesn't like what we do or say. Or the people we have for friends. How can you live like that? Because we've never lived any other way. I must go now. I'm sorry it had to end like this. It had to end some way. Sometime. I'm not so sure about that. Senor Barclay. I have been looking for you, senor. 
Captain Chavez would like to see you before you leave Rio Blanco. What's he want? He didn't say, senor. Uh, if the captain is in his office, would you come? Senor, I'm afraid I cannot permit you to leave Rio Blanco. Why not? Well, stop pretending, eh, Senor. I know that you helped Vicente Ruiz the night that he left Rio Blanco. I also know that your family is giving him refuge on your ranch in California. You are guilty of obstructing justice, Senor. You are under arrest. <laughs> In San Francisco. Oh, come on in. Right this way. Mother of Senor Cortinas, Mexican Consul. I am honored, Senora. Senor, please sit down. Gracias. You uh, will forgive me for calling on you unexpectedly. That's all right. May I offer you something? Oh, gracias, no. Senora. I know of the unfortunate incident which took place here last week. Incident? Well, my home was invaded in an attempt to kidnap a friend and two men were killed. Now, to my mind, that's uh, something a little more than an incident. Well, of course, I did not intend to minimize the affair. It was tragic. However, Senora, this official expression of regret does not mean that my government is not interested in obtaining the custody of Vicente Ruiz. He is charged with a crime. We wish him to return to Mexico to stand trial. Well, you obviously want something from me, but what? Your cooperation. Cooperation? Well, you have given Vicente Ruiz refuge in your home. He's a guest in our home, if that's what you mean. Ruiz is a criminal, senora. He was a bandit in the Sierra Madre for years. Is that why Diaz took him into the government? The president, he made a mistake in that appointment, senor. One he now acknowledges and is determined to rectify. And now you throw Vicente into a dark dungeon over some trumped-up charge. Well, now, you listen to me. Nick. Well, now, what are we talking to him for, Mother? What could he possibly say that would interest us? Those are good questions. Yes, and uh, I will try to answer, Senora. The Barclay family has rather extensive financial interests in my country. Oh, so that's it. We kick Vicente out of our house so your hired guns can grab him and haul him back to Mexico. Or Diaz will make an awful lot of trouble for us. I would suggest you think about it. There is nothing to think about. My son is right. If you're threatening to confiscate our property unless we withdraw our support of the general, you... Well, you'll just simply have to make good your threat. But why, senora? Why such a sacrifice for Vicente Ruiz? Does he mean so much to you? Yes. I still ask. Why? Senor, my husband and I were in Mexico 30 years ago at the outbreak of the war between our two countries. We were working in Durango. And as Norte Americanos, we were arrested as enemy aliens. We could have been executed. I believe we would have been had it not been for a young bandit and his men who were up in the hills around Durango fighting Santa Ana and his men. Vicente Ruiz. Yes. He and his men raided Durango, rescued my husband and myself, and took us with them into the hills. We lived with them, he protected us, and eventually he got us back to the United States border. Vicente Ruiz and his men saved our lives, some at the cost of their own. 
Now, does that answer your question? Yes, and I am sorry. Sorry? That you feel such a great obligation to Vicente Ruiz. It will make your decision that much more difficult. What decision? Senora, your son Heath has been arrested. Arrested? For what? For aiding Vicente Ruiz to escape from Mexico. He is in jail in Rio Blanco, awaiting trial. Senora, your son could receive the death penalty for his crime. Listo. Apunte. Dispare. Tomorrow. The next day. The day after that. I will be out there. You haven't been tried yet. Neither had he. Under the decrees of Dios, it is enough that I was a friend of General Ruiz. He has lots of friends. They can't kill them all. I shall try to take comfort in that fact when they stand me up against the wall, senor. Perhaps I shall even cry, Viva Vicente! But I doubt it. I would have cut out the heart of any man who called me a coward. Now, senor, I shall be honest with you. I sit here and wish I had some important information the government wanted. Or some compadre I could betray. Anything which I could use to bargain with Captain Chavez to spare my life. I don't want to die. Not like that. No one does. And you won't, senor. Government doesn't want your life. It wants Ruiz. Well, they won't get it. Your family won't give him up? No. And you won't ask them to? No. I don't understand that, senor. I think I admire it. But I don't understand it. Are you telling me there's nothing you can do or nothing you will do? All I can do is sympathize, Jared. But surely the State Department would intervene on Heath's behalf if you requested it. I have requested it, Victoria. Senator, are you completely aware that Heath's life is at stake? If it was my decision, I'd send the Army to Rio Blanco to get Heath if necessary. But it isn't my decision. I'll do what I can, but I can't do any more. What about the General? What's been his reaction? We haven't told him yet. You haven't told him. In the name of heaven, why not? Because if he knew that Heath were in jail because of him, he'd give himself up to the Diaz regime immediately. Don't you think he has a right to make that choice? We wanted to speak to you first. You see, if Vicente returns to Mexico, he'll never get out of prison alive. I understand your loyalty to him, Victoria, but you have an obligation to Heath, too. I'm aware of that. Of course you are, Victoria. But you're trying to do the impossible. It's Heath or the General, but not both. And is it such a difficult choice, Victoria? Heath is your son. Forget the General. Well, thank you very much for your time and advice. And you're quite right. We should forget this, Cynthia. Jared, we'd better be getting home. Senator? But you're not going to, are you? No. 
<laughs> no, because we don't believe it is either or. We think we can save both Heath and Vicente. At least we'll try. Thank you. Guard! Guard! Sergeant. What's the matter? This man is sick. Well? Well, get him a doctor. There is no doctor in Rio Blanco. And even if there were, I wouldn't trouble him with a man who goes in front of the firing squad in the morning. Something wrong with the food, senor? Not a thing. If you like garbage, I wouldn't slop pigs with that. Because you come from a rich country. I've heard your streets are paved with gold. But we are a poor country. Our people cannot be so particular. And we cannot be wasteful. Eat your supper, senor. Eat it, or I will have my men feed it to you. Sergeant. Well, right here. You eat it. moment, some scenes from next week's concluding episode of Legend of a General. Your guns on the table. set for two weeks from tomorrow at the district court in Hermosillo. Well, I thought I might point out to you that if you receive the death penalty, it will be carried out immediately. What are you doing? Yeah! 